Uh, proactive in welcoming Inuit to Villaray. I think that uh, it's one thing to say you're welcome, but it's another thing to back it up with substantial actions by actually uh, removing any uh, legal impediment to the progress of, of the uh, project. The project in Villaray ended up uh, dying because the, the Nunavik Health Board decided that we don't want to send our patients to a neighborhood where the uh, residents don't want us. I don't know what the next step is. I haven't been in contact with them, so yeah. My name is David Ruben Pictokan. I'm originally from Polytech Northwest Territories. I moved south in 1968. I've been living in Toronto for since 1980. It's kind of like a west wind blowing. It's the best conditions for ice fishing, but it, the ice is too thin right at this moment. We've been up here for 13 years in, in Sutton, my wife and I, Catherine. It's like being home, but away, home away from home. Eskimo living in South. <clears throat> My uh, childhood in the Northwest Territories, I think I was about four and a half, five years old before I, I was um, I selected to travel to a boarding school in Aklavik. Northwest Territories, we all went on, on the same plane. The recollection of a drone, just, just a very loud drone, and just a feeling of despair, and uh, I didn't know, nobody told us where we were going. I didn't know what was expect of, expected of me, but uh, I knew I was, uh, I retaliated, you know. You know, it's filled with anger and a lot of anger, confusion. So I beat up everybody. Anybody who looks at me, boom, I whack them. Being separated from my parents and family members, I just, what am I? What am I in jail or an institution? Or I didn't have a clue because I didn't understand English. It was a very dark period of my life. And, uh, the more angry I got, the more they beat me, whack my hands, pull my ears. The nuns were very abusive. I try and put that, put that deep, deep away again, even to this day. It got me really angry, but it also inspired me. I, I did an exhibition between two worlds and, and with that collection of works I had to I had to recall that period of time as uh, inspiration for uh, sculptures to create. So it, uh, it, it did two things. It got me really angry, but it also inspired me to, to deal with uh, to deal with that issue of the boarding school issue. There was a, a exhibition was thematic, and one portion was had to do with uh, Christianity and and how I felt about it. And what I started off as is being really angry. I wanted to make something really ugly. It turned out to be very beautiful, including the stone. But the nuns' eyes were very sad looking. They were wearing 
There were little crosses on their chests, on their breasts. I know my language is dormant within me, but I can't speak it fluently, so that's my only regret, my, my deepest regret, so. I was not able to speak with my parents or my, my people. And they always ask me, why don't you speak it? Like you're, you become like a white, white man. She's pretty dark for a white man, I, I always tell myself. This sculpture is called uh, Three Sheets to the Wind. It's symbolic of a period of my life when I was... I was intoxicated or stoned or something. So it's just a reflection of that period. For a long time ago, it's just a period of my life and I learned to start laughing at myself. And it, it helped with my, uh, with my situation and condition. It was in 1972 that my brother Abraham introduced me to stone carving. And uh, the first thing I did were pendants, just to get the feel of the stone, carve it, and finish it, polish it, and, and I, I never stopped since. And in Toronto, I, I, I did well in Toronto. I had uh, many studio spaces. It was like steady employment. As long as I created something, I was able to sell the work. I'm always selling works as soon as I create them. We got 24 hours to installation time. Not good, not great, but... I still have a confidence like I have a deadline to install tomorrow. All the parts are together, but uh, there's a lot of fine detail that, I'm, that I have to keep in mind, so. My wife likes to call it a teardrop finish because it's nice and glossy. And what it is is the pearl of wisdom that sits into the, uh, in, into the palms of the uh, Flight of the shaman. That's what I wanted to do. It sits nicely. I just got to keep uh, standing. I, I know inside me I, I'm an Eskimo, but uh, first and foremost is to be an artist. I just wanted to be creative in a free-flowing manner and to keep developing ideas and concepts to uh, just explore the art world and see where I fit in. Sometimes I over-drill and that's not good. Now we're still fine. This sculpture back here, it's the uh, it's a shaman that's been uh, that's been sent to the moon to to bring back the the pearl of wisdom. The Sedna has the escort, and he, he's just sort of piggybacking back to the people. He's, they're bringing gifts to the people so that they can exist into future generations. came together actually two years ago. Uh, the gallery that I worked with, called the Mia Gallery, they asked me if I could get a big whalebone skull. This is the jawbone of a whale, more than likely a bowhead whale. They're 75 feet long. It could be a blue whale too, because they were whaling in my polit in the Polytech region in the 1800 latter part. My great great grandfather was on a whaling ship, so he might have been on this kill on this harvest. So it's a, it's a, 
interest and to bring it back alive. Like it, it was just sitting there for centuries. And now that I'm carving it, I'll give it a new life. On here is the face. A female face, it's a sea goddess. There's a story that my father told me about the one-eyed people. And he uh, said these people became invisible. That means they have a lot of power. I'm living here in the south, 4,000 miles from my village. And when I carve it, it's, it's like me being at home. You can just get it from that dialogue between the carving and yourself. It gives me knowledge of who, who I am, the roots of my existence. It's already been commissioned, so it's going to someone's private home, somewhere in Switzerland, possibly. So it must be large. So it doesn't fit into a closet. It needs a lot of space. But I, I can say that to, if, if I had to redo this, like, next week, I would do it in less than one year, but it, it would probably cost about a half a million dollars plus to do a project like this. I can go ice fishing after it's installed. Voila, yes. So we'll see how it goes tomorrow. Gaffer tape and bubble, Catherine. Oh, there we go. We can uh, we can use uh, this this uh, hydraulic hoist to pick it up, or whatever happens, we'll make sure this guy don't slide off. Eh? It's pretty ancient. These sculptures have a life of their own. Once it's installed, it'd be like the big kahuna. Smoke is almost straight up. They call the city of uh, broken dreams, heartaches. Yeah, Lakeshore. It's called the Harborfront Center, southwest corner. Voila, here we go, here we are. Well, this is where I get nervous, folks. Don't be shocked. It's <laughs> I'm ready for any. Being a native and living in Toronto, I guess people saw me differently. As an artist, I was basically classified as an Eskimo artist, stone carver. But to be classified as an artist uh, on the mainstream, it was a, it was quite difficult because I That's carved uh, Arctic images. Uh, you want it I facing agree. out? No, I agree with you facing I'd out. Like to look at the sea. So to get away from that, I started incorporating free form and incorporating other materials. Even when I tried that. For the, uh, for the galleries, they didn't see me as an Eskimo either because uh, my work was not Eskimo art either. That was kind of confusing because uh, I'm living in the South. I'm using materials from different parts of the world to express my ideas and stuff. So it was like a juggling act for a number of years to be accepted as a native, as a new living in the South. I just kept pursuing what I enjoyed. She's still intact. It's OK. Two. Three. OK. 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 We'll just rest it down just for a moment. A little more forward. OK, we got two holes here. Right there. There. Yeah. That's, that's way better. All right. Go. I remember it shifted it that way. Oh, uh oh Don't lift it too high. You heard it cracking? Yeah, don't lift it too high. Okay. It fit perfectly at, at the welding shop. Yeah. 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 Yeah.